Well afternoon boys and girls, this is a mega random one, really random. I'm fishing in Tarworks Road, up Yarmouth, that's the River Bure. Well I think at the minute that's really high pressure on the beaches and not a lot are coming out, apart from the odd smatter and a smoothies if you get at the right time. So, and all these rivers, the bass run up the rivers, so why not try the old river? So I'm on the obviously River Bure at Yarmouth, Tarworks Road. I ain't fished here since I was a kid, and uh, yeah, thought I'd give it a go. Let's fish at the back of the van, easy fishing, and what more can I say? Probably won't get bugger all, but you got to be in it to win it. All I've done is pulled up, got my gear out, and that's it. Happy days. Well, I hadn't even bothered using my sea rods. What I've got is two Shakespeare Omni Uptiders. I bought them last year, or year before maybe to use them a boot and I never used them. It's the first time I got them out of the rod bags. They're hardly the most expensive things going. I think they were 30 quid each delivered to the door. So you can't really fault that. They don't look bad for the money. They're six to eight ounce or six to ten ounce sorry up tiders. And uh, I just paired them with my older divers. The old 7HT mags. Deer reel with the world's cheapest rod. Bit weird, but that'll do. Well, trace wise, I'm just using two hook flappers. Two hook flap on both rods. So the traces I used on the beach the other day, I just lift them out of the box, clipped them on, and there you go. See, two hooks, might even be a touch of rust on them, but that's, that's it. Really basic, simple stuff, like if I was fishing when I was a kid. Well, that's back of the van bait board. I've got my trusty new bait board. Hopefully the luck of the other day has worn off and now it's got some good luck. Well, all I've got is a heron and some bits of squid. I know it's not perfect. Fish in the river, you really want rag. But it's a last minute thing and I thought, all these are a bit different and random. <laughs> and they're certainly different and random. So I just chopped up some squid and heron and I'll use that to bait up. Cheap, easy shopping baits from the supermarket. As you can see, there's posts along the side here. That post is just saying shallow water. Well, I've flicked both rods in the margins. One's just down here, one's a little bit further on, sort of level with the post out. But that's fairly, a little bit of depth of water there, because you can see, obviously I've still got my shock leads on. I can see six foot of shock lead on this rod, and about three foot of shock lead, four foot of shock lead on another rod to us. As basically as the bank slope off or put the baits. Got to be in it to win it. The reason I'm fishing so close to the bank is there is a few boats go past here and I'm just here for a few hours relaxing. I'd want to keep reeling and have my eyes up my bum in case a boat come past. But fishing these shallow bits inside the posts or on the margins of them, that'll stop the old boats from coming too close on it. See there's another post there. I'm just off a opposite Sheeran's bootyard. I think anyone local will know where that is. But yeah, lovely evening. Lovely bit of sun on us. It's smashing. But I ain't fished up this sort of way since I was a kid. Used to come up here for catching eels and bits and pieces. This river might be full of crabs, that'd be horrendous because kids sometimes come up here with the old little long little crab lines and bits and pieces to catch crabs and they get hundreds of them. But I don't really care. I'm just here for a couple of hours for a bit. It's fun. Totally something different. Different from the norm and the same mundane shit we do. Fishing can get a bit mundane if you keep doing the same old thing. So this was totally random and nothing like I've ever done before. Well, not in the last 40 years anyway, or 35. <laughs> but the best bit is actually, I'm actually really excited about it. I really do hope we get something. I'm an excited little school kid. Well, I had some nice fish here in fresh water and sea fishing. So now I don't get that excited too often. But this has really got the older uh, adrenaline going. I'm excited like a small kid. I really hope I get something. My random gear and baits and stuff. But yeah. Worst thing to do than spending a couple of hours in the evening, side of the road, sitting in the back of the van, hoping to get the odd fish or two. We will but see, won't we? Oh, that's bloody lovely sitting here. 
matter of the wind by the van. There's a good southeasterly breeze at the minute and having awful on the beach. But I'm sitting here in the back of the van, out of the wind. Bloody lovely, just the odd person walking past, either probably coming in from work or something, or riding the bike or walking the dog. No problems, easy fishing. Let's just hope we get a fish, <laughs> if not, it's being embarrassing. <laughs> I can't have three trips on the chop. Well, he nothing. I ain't expecting a lot, to be honest, really. I just something round, I thought, oh, I'll give up, there we go, why not? High pressure. Maybe lovely nothing at, on the beaches because the high pressure and colour dropped out and yeah. As well as someone cooking, doing a barbecue, smell bloody lovely. Make me feel hungry, that do. Well, at the minute, it's roughly mid tide. I think there's about another three hours to go to high water. I think the huge tides, mid tides at the minute, but yeah. So we get a few fishes or rattle on the right hand rod, but it's more like be a crab, I think. It's a bit crab city down here. It doesn't look huge, you make more to come up on the banks over there. You can zoom in. That's no far let go up to be honest, I'm not sure. Will it come up any more or not? I haven't fished it since I was probably about 14, so I sort of like lost the local knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just casting anywhere, and you got real years ago. But yeah, it's lovely. No dirty, horrible sound, and, and you ain't got none of the lovely people you normally get on piers. You seem to get a few undesirables and strange people. Piers attract strange people like honey to bloody bees, doesn't it? I don't know why, but I do. Might have a quick reel in, all of about 10 foot. <laughs> I'll reel in the rod first while I saw the tip rattle. Touch, no surprise, but I might just put another little tip and bait on it just to refresh it and then go from there. Well, I was just speaking to a fellow fisherman in his other half a couple of minutes ago. So, a lot of people normally fish up near Asda for the bass. I went, Yeah, said so my foot is hurting at the minute, so I didn't bother walking all over up there. But back in the van, I can handle that. But the lucky sod is retiring tomorrow. Oh, lovely, eh? That's the next thing I want on my plan, retirement. Hopefully I'll be another, hopefully I'll be able to retire another 13, 14 years. That'll be great. Ah, oh, wonderful. I can't wait. Well, I'm gonna reel in the other rod and see what's going on there. Obviously, bait is untouched. So I'll give that a little bit of a. No, I ain't bothered touching it. I'll just flick that back out again. What we want to do in, your, in this mud, you flick it out and you've got to feather it down. You've got that all very up to the hill. Just feather the lead down, see what I do. When it hit the water, just put your finger on the spool and feather it down because then they don't go dink and sink into the mud so much. Look at that. Perfect. Ready for some more for some, ready for some more fishy action. Well, this weren't very lucky, just knocked my drink over and that rolled up the back of my van. That land on the little sucking bit you drink out of. Knocked it inside and broke the plastic. <laughs> That's a new little bit of drink spilt. But it'd be very easy to drink out of there. I'll have to unscrew it and use it like a beaker. 
Hey oh, I was a bit scratched and tatty. I was going to buy a new one on the way, I'm only about three and a half quid. Worst things have happened. If you look there, see, luckily the booters are scared of the posts. They're scared of ground and so they stay well outside of them. So you've got plenty of room to fish here. Let's see if there's any fish. <laughs> Last time I fished here, I was using cars and worms off the eels. I've never used squid and there and down here before. That ain't so bad. Even getting up, I'm completely bothered. So it's just sitting here in the sun. Bit of breeze, lovely. Worst places you can sit in there on a Thursday afternoon. Just getting some really light knocks and tremors. I don't know if you'll see it. That left hand rod. That's body crabs. You see little tiny tremors, like really slow. Imagine there's crabs just plucking the bait. Or, yeah, it probably might be crabs. Because the eels go berserk, don't they? I remember speaking to my old man years ago. As a kid, they used to get quite a few flounders up the rivers. But the flounders are a severe decline now. I think a lot of the problem is, oh, there's so many bass fry now, what didn't used to be there. They got up the rivers and they're eating all the baby flounders. So obviously the flounders go in the rivers to spawn in the estuaries and now there's tons of bass schoolies and they're eating all the baby flounders that's why I think all the flounders have disappeared times have definitely changed well that left hand rod has been rattling for 10 minutes I'm going to have to give it a little look I'm sure it's crabs Yeah, caught in the act. <laughs> That's weird for the first half an hour I was here, there weren't no crabs. But now they've certainly turned up. Get that back and get that baited up. That crab was in the slightly deeper water. The shallower stuff in the margins, I didn't get no crabs. That might be a thing. Cast a third of the way across. And uh, you can't see a shock leader, and you get a lot of rattles from crabs, but you cast shallow and you didn't. I might have one in the beak deep water, one shallow up, and see what go on. Let's see, crabs have ripped the baits to bits on the other rod as well. Might just be a state of tide, I don't know. Got something on there for a minute that rattled and stuff that must have pulled in some crap on the bottom but this baits the squid's been touched with a hair on it i'll get this baited back up again and get it back out well there definitely seem to be more rattles on that left hand rod or in the slightly deeper water i'm not actually sure what the depth is i think exactly plummeted it like you do with the old pole but i think that water's shallow like three, four foot in the edge. There ain't no rattles, but go down off the slope and there's gonna be plenty of rattles. Like years ago, they used to have matches further up the river in, in Yarmouth. You think years ago, there used to be a lot of fishing, commercial fishing boats. And they'd be cleaning the lines on deck, chucking all the old bait over the side. They used to support and attract tons of eels in the rivers. It doesn't seem to be the feed in the rivers anymore. Ever since they stopped putting the sewage in the rivers, the shrimps have disappeared, the ragworm and the mud disappeared, and everything else has vanished. Didn't the feed there used to be? Like years ago, Braden used to be alive with Dover soles and brown shrimps, but they're all gone now. And now lately, the biggest thing people are moaning about is dumping sewage in the rivers. That's what kicked off the food chain. People don't understand. To get a heightened amount of fish, what in, was unnatural, you need to have a lot of food to support it. And that's all that sewage was. That fed the lower bits and pieces like shrimps down the food chain. Well, 
Well, that left hand rod was rattling so much in that deep water, there's no reel it in, and the hooks were stripped clean like someone took the bait off, washed them, and rinsed them, and put a scouring pad over them. But I don't know if you can see now, I've put it in shallower. I don't know what, see, look, zoom in, and just about there, you can see the lead or not. So there's about five foot a lead you can see there. So that's shallower than what it was before, before you couldn't see any of that. So I thought, well, if the crabs are wiping everything out in five minutes and clearing the bait, it's not fishing properly. All right, I expected to get tons of fish here, but you might give yourself a fighting chance, didn't you? Well, a couple of casts ago, I thought I pulled out of a heft on that right hand rod, rod to non locals. That's a snag. And I think I caught it again. And luckily, the hook come off. So I'll tie a new hook on there and get it back out. But obviously, I'm not going to put it in exactly the same place it was before. I'll get snagged on that again. Oh, now that tide's eased, them rod tips are rattling like hell. That must be live with crabs out there now, even in the shallow water, that's rattling. Bloody things. <laughs> and you got to expect that fishing river, isn't you? They're full of crabs, tons and tons of them. Cool. I'm like an excited little school kid. That left tip just pulled down about half inch, three quarters of inch, twice. Oh, is it going to go? Is it? Is it? Is it? Some crabs had done weight or something. He didn't only really pull that down, he just rattled, but that actually pulled down half inch, three quarters inch, twice. I was hoping that's now you're gonna go. Oh, go on, please, please go. Oh, go on, pull down. I'm like a sight, little school kid. I've been getting no crab bites where that is because that's bright in shallow water now. I've only been getting the crabs in the deep water. Please pull down, please. Can't be excited. <laughs> I haven't fished here since I was 14. It's 30 years ago. As I go back 30 years and feel like a kid again, all excited, so doing something different, something new. I think it's what you need now and then, it? chop and change, do something totally different to the same old squit. I get a bit dull and boring, no matter what it is. The same old thing, chopping a nice change is good as anything. Very sad times, I just went real that left hand rod in, and that was hefted solid, and I bloody parted getting it off. What a nightmare. I know there's a few bits of junk being chucked in this river, but I've been hefted off, hefted twice now in a few casts. Oh, disheartening, isn't it? Thought it was sea gear, pull it off easy, but obviously not. I just parted that and I better tie it all up again and get it back out. Well, the left hand rod is all back out again. I just put another two hook flapper. Obviously, I didn't bother putting a shock leader on. I just put a plain bomb on this time. So, yeah, uh, the two hook lengths, the snuds, only about 12 pound line. So they're a lot lighter than what they were. So uh, hopefully, if I do get hefted again, I should pop the snud and not lose everything. See that rattling now, since I put any bait on there, shallow. That's just gone alive with crabs, absolutely alive with them. I just reeled in the other rod, the right hand rod, and look. Completely stripped bear hooks. And crabs are eating everything in seconds. Hungry little buggers. Well, that's um, nice getting tea time now, a little bit later. Them boots are eased off, so I just flick that right hand rod about a third of the way across. Hopefully there might be a fish or two there. But the other rods are just getting absolutely hammered with crab straight away, just relentless. Well, this river is salt and brackish and that sort of thing. But one thing I've just seen in the distance, a swan. Quite a one of them coming over here. They can be a nightmare. In this shallow water, they can get their head down and everything. Mind the days, carp fishing and coarse fishing fighting swans ah oh, especially we've got little ones they can be a nightmare ah <laughs> oh, just one fish please i'm getting a bit disheartened now it's been a couple of hours and all i've got is constant knocks from crabs and that's about it really i don't know if you can see it on the camera 
This isn't really got the best uh, zoom when you're up and down, but it looked like there's a couple of two or three mullet going past the far margin there. I don't know if you can pick up on the camera, look at a couple of mullet just on the surface, dorsal fin out, just pooling along in the tide. Ain't got a care in the world. That might be the next option. Bring a few dog biscuits or trope, floating trout pellets and see if I can get a mullet. Now that would be fun. Not on these rods, obviously I'll look at a quiver rod or an old feeder rod from years ago from the old coarse gear and fish with them. That would be good fun, that would, wouldn't it? Well, I've been there a couple of hours. It's about an hour from high water, and that's the tide has eased quite a lot. And the crab's just relentless. Every the bait's lasting five minutes. You, like it's, you can see now, the oh, it's twinged on the right hand rod, but it's just crabs relentless eating everything. You know when the bait's gone because they stop rattling. Well, it's not looking very good, is it? <laughs> I come here with so much hope and enthusiasm, but that's last half an hour with these crabs, boom, 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 shipping all the baits in less than five minutes. Uh, it's not looking too sharpish, is it? <laughs> not looking too sharpish at all. <laughs> That's lovely sitting down there, isn't it? Look at that, in the sun, sitting down here. Bloody lovely. You can't really complain about that, can you? Well, I just reeled in and got hefted again. This time I just applied steady pressure and eventually that came out. Just a bit of a bit of two and a half mil twin and earth flex cable out of a house. I don't know what it's doing in the river, but it's obviously been there a long time. You see all the barnacles have grown on it. But yeah, just a bit of old cable. Why well, people are chucking the river, I don't know, but obviously someone did. <laughs> Make a change from a crab or bear hook, so it's something a bit different. Well, unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to be here that much longer. The bait's getting stripped in seconds. I thought, last few casts, I'll just whack it halfway across and see where that go. Probably won't get nothing, but I can't see the rod tips go anymore. So if that's a way to avoid the crabs, then that's got to be a positive. It's been very quiet. Oh, I didn't expect a lot, but there you go. It's nice to just come up here and sit here in the sun. It's worse places to sit and you've got this lovely sit in the back of the van no sand and a few people walking past and have a bit of conversation with them they've been, everyone's been polite and friendly and people have walked past saw me and put the dogs on a lead and couldn't really ask them for any more and someone on the allotments behind me's got a barbecue and that smelled absolutely fantastic <laughs> that's make me feel hungry that's for certain and on my last cast look at that little bugger as I lifted the rod out of the water, there was a crab on the bottom hook what fell off and this one was still greedy and feeding, see? Green little bugger. We'll get him back. Well, that's it, I'm now gonna break the gear down and I'll put already put one rod in the van. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching it, something a bit different. I ain't caught bugger all, but it's a lovely sitting down here in the sun. That's actually fantastic. There's worse places you can sit Bit of a reminisce from days gone by, but yeah, I don't get many eels up here now. But that was enjoyable. Okay then, until next time. Hopefully we'll be in the boot and we'll get a few bits and pieces. Cheers for watching, boys and girls. Hope you keep well. Catch you later. Bye.